Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel with myself Isabella. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Before we begin, if you're new here, click the subscribe button so you never miss a video from me. Today, we're gonna to be doing a fun video. I'll be sharing with you my favorite and least favorite ballet steps. Now, it's actually been quite hard for me to pick my least favorite ballet steps because generally, <laughs> I love ballet. I worked really, really hard to remove most limitations so that, you know, I didn't find anything too difficult. But having said that, there's still those annoying steps that I have to concentrate just that little bit more on. And most of the time, there's some kind of jump because jumps and beaded jumps were always the ones that were particularly difficult for me to get. But let's start with my favorite ballet step. My first favorite ballet step is renversé. Now, I love renversé. I think it's such an expressive movement and it's something that embodies the whole body. When it's done well, it just shows also the flexibility of the body, the strength of the body, and also literally the emphasis of letting go. Because, you know, you're doing the renversé and you're literally letting go of the body as you do the movement. It's often seen in the Odile variation when she just run to the corner and we go, da yum. Ba -da -dum, da -da -dum, bum, um, which is just so beautiful. And for me, it's just a favorite because it's just so fluid and shows so much expressivity. I think as well with the Vaganova school, there's so much emphasis on character dancing. We do a lot of character dancing. We did a lot of renversés in character. And so that's why I think especially the Marinsky are very good at showing the back and utilizing their back because of that. So renversé is one of my favorites. My second favorite is probably arabesque. Again, similar. I think arabesque is the sort of the pose or the step that everybody knows. When you think of a ballerina, the most classic pose is usually arabesque and it's obviously one of the most important poses to get and to do well because it's a very important pose. There's never a ballet without an arabesque. I think it's one of my favorites because again, one of the things I really worked hard on, both for the, the strength and the flexibility of, of my arabesque, it became something that looked very good on me. I enjoy anything with arabesques in because especially when it's dynamic, you can show your beautiful arabesque. And my teacher would always try to like push it higher, push it higher to make it even more impressive especially when we're thinking about things like Swan Lake and my teachers always considered me as somewhat of a swan, mostly because of my build. Arabesque is something that's so critical for Swan Lake. Like you have to have a beautiful arabesque. You have to have beautiful lines. And so arabesque for me is one of my favorites. My next favorite would have to be any kind of pirouette. I just love pirouettes. I love anything to do with pirouettes. I love on Dior, I love on Dodon, I love Grand Pirouettes, I love Fouettes, I love Monège, I love Piquet Monège, all of the above. I just love any kind of pirouette. And again, just worked super hard on the skill of pirouette to make them consistent, clean, and then worked so hard on them so that I could push the boundaries of pirouette, like do a few more and just push myself. That was something I really honed and now something I really enjoy doing because there's nothing like when you go into an on Dior pirouette and then you pull out five or six and you just hold it at the end and then you go into it. So you're playing with the music all the time with your pirouettes and there's something very special about feeling very rhythmical with your pirouettes. So being able to go a bit faster or go, go start slow and then really amp it up and go faster, faster, faster. So um, pirouettes are something I really enjoy and something that obviously we all have to work on a lot so we have the skill of being on balance and then it's very freeing then when you have strong technique to really push your pirouettes and push the boundaries so pirouettes of any kind I love let's not talk about the left though <laughs> so my fourth favorite ballet step would have to be grand jeté now this is a surprising one for me to put in this category because again it was something that I had to work on a lot mainly the transition into the grand jeté could often look a bit ungainly and not look too elegant for me once I mastered the skill and someone gave me a very fantastic correction once which just really made it work for me which was you know the second leg coming in when you do uh, let's say 
chasse glissade, the second leg on the glissade has to be super quick. So you do, you know, ta-ta, glissade. And it's like not glissade, grand jeté, but it's like glissade, grand jeté. And that made all the difference. So I sort of really rebounded off the floor and really found the height, as well as I always think about kicking gum or sort of getting gum off my shoe with the second leg. So it's like, as that second leg goes down, I really think about that power with the second leg as well as projecting forwards, but it's like literally like you're trying to get something off your shoe as you project. So that would be one that is a huge favorite of mine. When you see a fantastic Roger and you see them floating, it's just amazing. So that would be one of my favorites. And my final favorite, obviously I have, I have so many favorites. So this was like quite hard to choose. Hence why I put all pirouettes in one category. <laughs> my final favorite would have to be Devil Pay Alice Ocon. I think that's a big favorite of mine and it's again so iconic. There's nothing like a beautiful Alice Ocon or beautiful Ecarte when you see a dancer in Nadarjo do that, such as you know Svetlana Zakharova or Osipova, even you know in the Giselle, it just looks so beautiful, like this leg out of nowhere, and it's just um, so beautifully turned out and placed and high up. Um, you know, it's it's very impressive and. Um, I think especially when done with control and not whacked up, it's even more impressive and it's just like, wow, it just keeps going, oh my gosh. Especially when it's coming up from underneath the Giselle skirt, it's just amazing and then you see that beautiful foot. So Alice Ocon is definitely my favorite. Now we're gonna move on to my <laughs> least favorite ballet steps, but before we do, comment down below your favorite. I really wanna read because I've probably forgotten some that I absolutely love but I would love to know your favorite ballet steps as well as my not so favorite ballet steps. I would love to know what yours are down below. Right, now we're gonna move on to my least favorite ballet steps. Like I said, this was hard to decide, but I tried, I tried. My first least favorite ballet step would need to be, would need to be, would have to be en chassis. En chassis. I think en chassis are annoying, they can be difficult. For me, they are not a natural step. So I've had to really, really work on those. And if you're struggling with entrecises, I understand. But there's one thing I like to think about is, obviously it's quite hard to think about two feet at once and two legs at once. So when you're doing entrecises or in actual fact, you know, any kind of beat, I would say to my students, you know, think about your dominant leg mostly. So when we're doing it, let's say my dominant le leg is the right leg, I would just think about my right leg going back, front, back, amongst some other corrections, but that would be the main one, because then you're only really focusing on one part, whereas when you focus on two feet, it's kind of hard to sometimes focus and execute the seas well. So on chassises, so I'm very always impressed with um, the male dancers who do the Giselle. Ta -ta, ta -ta. Amazing, amazing, but like anything, it takes practice. So I'm sure if, as females, I'm sure if we did on chassises more often and regularly, then they'd of course get better as well. Okay, this is quite a funny one, but en boite in attitudes, even though I love how they look. Let's just think for a sec. In the Sleeping Beauty Precious Stones, the coda, yum, bum, 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 yum, bum, that, I'm not singing it very well. <laughs> but basically, I love how they look, or in that Corsair variation, yum, bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum, and she's doing the en boites coming around. Again, love how they look. To dance though, and to actually feel how that feels when you're dancing, they just feel quite heavy, I think. So like lifting the hips off the floor and making them look light and springy actually requires a huge amount of effort. You know, lifting the legs off the floor like that um, and keeping your hips up and not looking ungainly and like your legs are super far apart. So I think en boite and attitude uh, are one of my least favorites. I love how they look. They're just quite hard to execute. <laughs> okay, the next one, gargouillade, hard to say, which I think in French, it literally translates as the gremlins, like on top of the buildings, looking down. You know, the there's actually a word for them. <laughs> the sort of gremlin things on top of an old building looking down, this sort of the ugly things, which is funny because this is kind of a strange step, isn't it? Again, I love the way they look when done well, and especially when people go all out and do the double double 
I think it's really, really cool. They just look weird and they just can look a little bit ungainly. Like it's literally like you're just shaking your legs and, <laughs> and hoping for the best. I'd say it's like a drunken parasha you know, going like this. So again, one of my least favorite ballet steps, but I think they can look really nice. And again, they can be super musical, da 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 da. Like they're often in the, I mean, they are in the Sugar Plum Fairy in the Opera House version. So, you know, they look really nice. I think they also look nice on a smaller dancer. Like again, I'm really, really tall, so my legs are long. So it just kind of looks like this crazy shaking of the legs, you know? <laughs> I think it looks better on a slightly smaller person than where it's more a little bit more compact in the legs. That's my personal opinion. Let me know what you think about that. Right, my next least favorite ballet step would be Tom de Flesh. Again, this is hard. I don't hate any of these steps. Like I really love everything about ballet, even these difficult steps. I think I'm choosing steps that can very easily look ungainly on someone's physique like mine. We have to have this beautiful long leg, long leg, long leg before we come down. It can look very bent. Sometimes if we don't fully stretch our legs before we step on them, then we end up just looking like a crab, like my teacher used to call me. That one in itself is a little bit difficult to make look seamless and in control. It's always important to really grombat mon the first leg. So making sure it's not slow and it's not too low. So you have to massively grom back on the first leg, like with any large jump and make sure you use your arms to help you and then use your epaule mon to land. So that's really important. Tom de flesh, I'm thinking about it in the Dolcinea variation. We have to have nice long legs as we go into it. So that would be another step that's a little, a little bit challenging. And then my final one, again, oh, it's very difficult, but Italian fuetes. Now, I actually really like Italian fuetes in terms of I actually enjoy doing them, but in order to make them look good is difficult. Therefore, they're on my least list. You have to have a beautiful ecarte. You have to make sure you go through that first position without sort of stubbing your toe and without grazing the floor too much. You know, it has to be quite light through that position. And then we have to whip our backs around and make sure we show a turned out attitude and a hold in attitude whilst we're looking to the front. To make all those sections of the Italian fuete smooth, seamless, and also beautiful is difficult. So that requires a lot of practice as well as you always have to emphasize with your arms and anticipate with your arms so make sure they're not slow getting to the position and once you've found the attitude bring the arm down before you go into the next ecarte yeah all those things are really really important but yes those are my favorite and least favorite ballet steps i'm sure i could come up with so many so many more favorites and so many more least favorites R to reiterate i love everything about ballet actually these are just slightly more difficult steps, but comment down below which ones are your favorite and which ones are your least favorite. And also let me know if you want a part two, if you like this video, because I, I can definitely do a part two of my favorite and least favorite ballet steps. But like anything, whatever is on your least list, you obviously need to work on those and maybe then you could upgrade them to your favorite list. So we always have to work on our limitations and we always have to work on things that we find harder. Don't hide from that. Like be vulnerable, work on your mistakes, work on things that require more practice. Before we close off this video, I just wanna say my new platform, balletwithisabella.com, the relaunch of the platform, because obviously it's currently there, but we're having a huge, huge relaunch and it's very nearly ready and I can't wait for you to see it. You'll get a two week trial, so, so much time to try out the new platform. There'll be a little video on there all about me, along with more classes, courses, structured plans will be included in the soloist tier so that you can follow along a certain plan if you have a goal coming up and you wanna be fit for a summer school or you wanna be more flexible of all levels. And then we also have our principal tier, which is where you get bespoke personalized plans and interaction with me, where we will discuss your goals and really just help you reach your goals in a very bespoke way, along with live classes with me and other teachers, where we'll be doing floor bar, yoga, advanced Pilates, ballet classes, you name it. So we have so much on offer, as well as lots of intensives as well. So I strongly suggest you check out the platform 
very soon. It'll be live super soon. Try your two week trial because I put my heart and soul into it. It's already helping many, many dancers around the world. And as soon as they try the content, they just love it and they see such amazing results. We've had some amazing feedback. They just kind of think, I don't know why I haven't done it before. That's my mission, both with the YouTube, the podcast, the dancers mindset, my platform, and also my tips on Instagram is to just help more and more of you reach your goals because I know how hard it is and it's not only physically hard but also mentally hard. So with the exercises on my platform and the in-depth courses on my platform, I reiterate for all levels, I will help you get where you want to. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye for now.